Hey guys, welcome aboard, welcome back to the channel, Nigel's Modeling Bench. Thank you for tuning in and I uh, hope you enjoy the video. Right, so today we are working on the engine. This is the um, the beautiful, I'll show you the box here. This is the beautiful Airfix 124 scale Spitfire Mark 9C. Beautiful artwork on there. Really, really nice model and it's going together a dream. So today we're going to look at the engine. Now... In the instruction manual you have two choices with this kit and I think I've mentioned this before. Basically you can build the engine up as a dummy. You can see the engine being built up here going into its bearer. You have to cut this um, part of the intake away so you can uh, slide the, the cover on, the engine cover, as I did with the Stuka I built. If you haven't seen that one, go take a look. And basically the engine, engine cover slides on. So you glue all that together and you glue it on. If you just want the engine, if you don't want the engine exposed, you don't want to see any detail or anything. So that's the way you do it. So what Airfix have done is rather than what some companies would do with, you know, they'd say omit this bit if you're doing this. They've done a whole set of, this is what they always do, a whole set of instructions on doing it that way. Okay, so, I mean, if you're not going to do that, you could actually cut that page out of your instructions if you want to. I don't know, see no point. Then here again, you start again, you see, with the same build. So here you have the, the engine halves, the, the block halves and the sump going together. And here you have the same thing again. So what they do is rather than confuse you with don't do this or don't do this, they just one set of instructions for that way, then one set of instructions if you're going that way. So we're going that way, we're going to have the engine on show. So it starts off with building up the engine block and the sump, which I have done here. Here's a blue Peter, here's one I did earlier. Okay, and then it goes on to um, building up the cylinder banks. There's two of them, which I've got here. There's two of them. I haven't added the, added the uh, cam covers yet. Um, something I will tell you, and if you are watching Plastec, you need to be aware of this. There's some issues with this sprue. You can see here on the engine, on the uh, cylinder block, if you look there, you can see on that end, it's all sort of, it's like something's gone in there and bent it over. You can see in that hole there. You can see that hole has been elongated. It's like it's when it's been pulled out of the tooling or something, there's a problem. So it's on that part and also on another couple of parts on the same sprue. So this is sprue K we're looking at. Um, I don't think there's any more issues on, on here, but there were issues on those parts. And uh, unfortunately, but nothing to worry about. It's easy. It can easily clean up and it won't be seen. I'll just... Go over that with a knife, just remove that lump that's been pulled out. And if we do get any gaps there, it's just a case of filling it. Uh, and there, that hole's been elongated and raised on the surface. So we'll just take the, the top of that off and then we can get a sander. And just sand all that down flat. Simple as that. So if you've got the same issue with your kit, that's how easy it's going to be to solve that. No problem. At all. Right. So that's that done. So we've got those. There were some gaps in the end. It was sort of the, came together with a bit of a hollow. So you can see we've got super glue and Mr. Surfacer in there to get rid of those gaps. So we've done that. Then it's moving on to the inlet manifold here. And I've glued those halves together, sanded out the seam. I'm probably going to give this a cast texture. I'll show you how I do that. But I'm going to give it a cast texture because it's not a very nice seam. The parts were kind of like that. I believe one, one half was bigger than the other. Could just be my kit. I may have a dodgy sprue. I mean, I may have this one odd sprue. Maybe it came out of the mould too quickly or something. I don't know. But um, I know their quality control after watching Les's video. I know they do a lot of quality control where they check for complete sprues and stuff. I think they need to look a bit harder at the actual quality of the parts as well, rather than just looking to see that everything's on the sprue. Um, so here we're going to build up the inner manifold. Somebody messaged me and said there was a problem with this part, K47. Um, there's K47. I can't see a problem with it myself. So I don't know what you were referring to, my friend, whoever you were. Uh, but I don't know what you're referring to. So we're going to build that up in a minute. And then unusually, they're telling you to glue the inlet manifold into the cylinder heads. And then glue the, 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 the cylinder heads with their banks onto the block, which is very unusual. Normally you would do it the other way around. So what I will probably do here is glue the cylinder blocks to the um, to the main gearbox, to the main um, engine block, leave the rocker covers off, and then drop the inlet manifold down in. Because somebody else did message me and said there was an issue with a big gap here somewhere. So we shall have a look at that. 
Um, so I'm going to slightly change the build process in here as I always do. And then you can watch me build it and you can do the same. I've got here the main um, gearbox cover casing coming together at the back. I've done that. And then we've got the header tank being built up. I've done that. Then coming down here, we've got the um, charge cooler. I've done that. We've got the uh, intake for the supercharger. I've done that. And we've got the intake here, which is going into the air filters. I've done that. And then going over the page, we have down here some sort of hydraulic pump. I've done that. So basically, oh, I had a problem with this as well. This is another part, part that was affected. You can see how it's all bent on the end. It was bent right over. I've got a bit of a seam line on there as well still. Um, it was bent right over and the, the end of this part was actually pulled out. I think I showed it in another video. But I've got them glued together now so we'll just bend that back in and that'll be sorted. So I've done that. So what I've basically done, which I always recommend modelers to do, get your instruction manual, look ahead and assemble units that you know you're going to need. Like cylinder banks here like here I've done that I've sanded out the seams like this header tank you know there was a big gap to deal with in there and there was a big seam you know if I'd have gone through the instructions right done that done that done that when I got to that bit here just there I'd have had to stop because I need to do some seam work as it happens I wouldn't because I'm not going to fit that I'm going to fit that after the engine is built because that has to be aluminium and the rest of the engine is black and on that note you will see some engines are dark grey a wartime Merlin engine was always painted black post-war with grey, okay? So um, bear that in mind. Uh, so um, what we're going to do is continue with building this engine. Right, so we've got these two parts off. So K47, K48, and if you're not sure which is which, if you've done like me and got them off and then got them mixed up because I've test fitted it and then took it off and not put them in the right order, if you look at them, you can see on here see on the part there is some detail on here on the top face and you can see that one side is like a, a solid block and the other side is like two separate two separate lines see the difference in there well the two separate lines face the, the bulbous end of the intake manifold so that one there is k48 so that's going to go on to there like so and they are literally a push fit you can fit them in with a push just like so there we go so they go in like that and then I'm going to get some extra thin and just glue them in from the backs now I said I was going to give this a textured finish because it's not very nice, but there's really no point because it can't really be seen. The only bit of it you're going to see is from the top there. So, I mean, what we could do is brush some extra thin into here, like so. Get the surface just damp. And then if you get the surface damp and then stipple it. You can get a gentle cast texture. You're not after something... You don't want it to look like a, you know, a, a rough old fire grill or something, fire grate, but just to give it a bit of a finish. Just looks a bit more interesting than having it all glossy. And I'll show you close up in a minute what it looks like. But you can see what I'm doing. I'm just wetting the surface and then just tap it, do the same on the actual risers there. Being a bit careful not to affect any detail. And then you'll see on there, while it's still shiny, you can see we have a little bit of a textured finish on there. Just looks a bit more interesting than just having everything smooth. So that's that done. Like I say, they're telling you now to glue these, to glue this manifold to the cylinder heads, like so. And then glue that cylinder head on there and then fit it to the engine I think they might have done that because you can't physically get this to go down between the cam covers so what I'm gonna do is glue 
the actual cylinder blocks to the engine, make sure I get them the right way around. Now, one thing Airfix have done here, and all the manufacturers do it, and I think it's wrong. If you know, please tell me, if you have a Merlin engine at home, I think these blocks should be staggered. Okay? V engines always have st staggered cylinders because the crankshaft has two rods per journal, okay, and they're next to each other. So the centre of one piston is here, and the centre of this piston is here. So the cylinders, I think, should be staggered. But Tamiya haven't done it, Border Model haven't done it, and Airfix haven't done it. So maybe the Merlin engine is different. Who knows? We can put some, plenty of cement in there, get it in there. And I'm only going to glue one side for fear of having glue oozing out. I don't want any oozage. So just get some cement in there. I don't want to see glue oozing out on the other side. Get a nice clean joint on the other side. And just go around the back. Some in the front there and I mean once they're on and set we could always run a brush full of extra thin down the joint but I don't want to put glue in there now and have it oozing out some would say it could look like a hermatite or something gasket sealer but um there wouldn't be a gasket there because that's yes there were separate cylinder blocks isn't it on this engine sorry it's not a cylinder block is it it's uh, sleeves that come off do, 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 do. There we go. In fact, I'm going to go and look at some reference material. There must be a picture on Google Images of a Merlin engine block. So I'm going to go and see if this is right or wrong. Let's have a look. Well, knock me over with a feather. I can't believe it. This is actually correct. What Rolls-Royce did, I, you learn something every day, don't you? What Rolls-Royce did, instead of having the comrods next to each other on the crankshaft like this, they had one narrow one and one like this. So you had, basically you had three bearings per journal and you had one one rod in the middle and then two narrow ones either side god knows why they did it um if they wanted to keep the block even perhaps i don't know but um yeah so rather than having two con rods coming off one here one here on the bearing journal they had one here and then one like this so if you imagine my wrist is the con rod you can see they're both they're both in line rather than being like this. Amazing. Right, there we go. So it's correct. On with the build. Right, so we've got the engine uh, cylinders on there. So now we've got the inlet manifold is going to drop in. And like I said, I reckon the reason they've done it this way in the instructions is because it possibly won't drop in past the cam cover. So that's going to drop in there. And it is a beautiful fit. You probably could actually glue those cylinders together as they've said and it would work. Now somebody, I forget who it was, sorry, I think it might have been John, messaged me to say that there is a big problem with the engine and there's like a one millimetre gap. Um, I can't remember who it was, but they, they said that it was too big for Mr. Surfacer, with a little emoji, a you know, smile, because you know, I use Mr. Surfacer for everything. Um... I don't see where the problem is. I, do, I don't have that issue with this model. Having said that, I do have a dodgy case brew. So maybe there are some dodgy case brews floating about. And again, the beautiful design from Airfix. They've got the... Um, they've got the uh, engine parts all on one sprue. So, and it's the case brew. Now I'm going to have to give this a clamp, I think. So what I'm going to do... Just grab my Rebel Clamp. Everybody asks where these come from. Rebel Clamps from Sweden. I've done a review on them. If you have a look back at my channel, you'll see. So I'm going to clamp that down. And then get a couple of pegs. And pull the cylinder blocks and cylinders together. And we're going to let that cure while we get some more parts off the sprue. Just a little tool thing here, 
Um, I've talked about these before, but in case you're new to the channel, you won't have seen me use them. The Infini Clear File three-way system. They do a large and a small. Okay, I've got both here. You can see them there. Um, <clears throat> they are absolutely incredible. There's other manufacturers do them as well. You don't have to get the Infini ones, but if you're in the UK, you can get these from Premium Hobbies and use the code NMB10 and you get 10% off. They are they're glass files and they are absolutely incredible for removing sprue nibs. So you can see on here, I've cut the part off the sprue and then I've just trimmed it off with the, with the nippers and we've got a tiny bit of sprue nib sticking out there. So as you know, you can come in with a sanding stick and quite often you end up with a little bulge or something. But because these are rock hard, they're glass, it's going to take away the sprue nib and nothing else. And because they're fairly, I mean, this is the coarsest one in the set. And because they're very fine, they will remove the sprue nib. As long as you don't push, as long as you're gentle, it removes the sprue nib and nothing else. And you will see here, I'm just gently stroking the plastic and it's taken away the sprue nib but it won't unless I push it it won't take any material off and you might be able to see there if I can get in close up this, this there's an edge on there between those bolts I'm just going to scrape that away that's like a raised part of the sprue nib but you can see there that it's kind of polished it's polished the surface same here, we've got the same, there's a sprue nib there, look right on the edge. Just come in there, with the glass file, and just file it away. And it's got the same in between those bolts, we've got a raised bit there, just scrape that away. But they're absolutely brilliant. Um, you know, and, and for flat surfaces, you can, you can see I can stroke that over there, it's not really removing any material. But it will make sure it's dead flat and it will polish up the edges. Uh, they're also very good for removing seams on canopies, which we will look at. Which we will look at. I'm seeing I've got issues with this part as well that you can see on here. There's all stress marks where it's all pulled it around. And I've also got a very funny mark there. Well, that one's absolutely fine. I'm just wondering if that mark is supposed to be there. I don't think it is. So we'll scrape that away. You may have one as well because it looks like that's part of the mould, not just my kit. So there is a funny raised edge there. It's probably an imperfection in the mould. You know, you, you'll get this from time to time and you've got to imagine if you've spent hours and hours making a mould and it gets a mark in it. Are you going to remake that mould? No, not when it's a plastic model and we're going to be sanding and filling stuff anyway, so there we go. But I have got, you can see there's all stress sparks around that cap there. So you may have the same issues with yours. I'm just going to use a sponge, we'll use this Infini sponge, and just go around the edges and just remove any flash or whatever that's on the edges. Do the same on that one and we get a lovely clean part which is ready to go so I've got these parts here all cleaned up this is K4 K3 and K81 so I'm gonna put K4 is gonna slide over there like so it's a tight fit looks like it has the it has a flat face you can see it. I'll, just, I'll use the part to you there's one face which is flat and there's one face which is ray has a raised diameter on it you there that's got a raised diameter on it it goes with the raised diameter facing in by the look of it and we've got some flash down in there just stopping it seating right down so we just scrape that away it's not flash actually it's a mold seam so just scrape that away and then we can push that right down and then this piece here k4 is going to go on the top with the little nubbin upwards like so Okay, so we're going to put a drop of extra thin on there. That will capillary down into the hole. And we can also allow us to glue this one on like so. So we can push that one on. There we go. And we'll just run around there with the extra thin just to give it a good go. 
and then after it's all on there and dry I'll go around and clean that mould seam up. It's often easier to do mould seams on parts after they're assembled. And we're just going to put a drop of glue on here and then fit this part here. I think this is a fuel pump. Just for that part on there like that. So there we go. So that's those bits assembled onto the back of that cam cover. You can see there are stress mark ready ejector pin marks putting through. It looks like this sprue has a big bit of problem coming out of the mould to be honest. Right. Um, right, so we're going to get these on. Just like so. So they go in lovely. Oh, hang on, there's a gap there. That's going to have to be cut out. So we're going to have to remove some material. So I'm going to get our knife and cut away some material from inside here. I'm not sure if it's that that's stopping it, that little lug there. But I'll keep the camera on and then you can see what I'm doing and then if you need to do the same to yours you can. Make sure you've got a nice sharp blade. There's nothing more dangerous than a blunt blade. Yeah, something stopping that going right down. I think it might be. Those lugs are a bit high. Hmm, bit of a gap, but I'm not going to worry about it because I can't see what's stopping it. Not going to worry too much about any gaps because the engine is painted black, so any gaps or anything won't be seen. If it's going to take a lot of work and risk mess messing up detail, it's not worth trying to get rid of them. But um, here we go. So we're going to put some cement into there and let that capillary around and we'll put some cement in there. And there we go. And then this side we're going to run some glue in and not squeeze it because we don't want the glue oozing out. And then this side's going to go on. That side fits much better. Just goes straight on. Extra thin in there, extra thin in there, and then a drop on the inside, that should do us. As you can see our engine is really starting to take shape now. Right, so we've done the manifold, we're at that point there now. So, we the page, and it's telling us to fit these two small parts here, K61 and K62 into the back of the engine so let's get that done let's get those off the we'll screen cleaned up the tiny little bits I've never seen these on a Merlin engine before so get that in the tweezers I'm just going to put a drop of cement on the end of it and then drop that into its resting place just like so And then put some glue in there and we'll get this one in and you may notice you may think be thinking to yourself I'm working a little bit sloppy um, and you're not wrong uh, when it comes to when it comes to Merlin engines I don't worry too much about things because because it's all painted black how just stab myself because it's all painted black and now I'm bleeding ah, look. Um, because it's all painted black the gaps don't really show so I mean I may go some Mr. Service around there but um 
you know, it's not really much worth making too much fuss about gaps and stuff. And, and because, I mean, there's a seat, there's a gap there anyway, because it's a cam cover or a rocker cover, whatever you want to call it. And um, the gap's on the inside. I'm not going to bother about it too much. Right. Uh, now we've got the gearbox. So we've got K61 and K62 in. Let me get myself cleaned up. You don't see blood, do you? Okay, so I've made a discreet little bandage that shouldn't affect the way uh, this is going. So there we go, got that sorted. Right. <laughs> so um, onwards and upwards. These gearbox halves, I've already done that. They're there. Okay, so they're already gone together. There was a bit of a seam to deal with on them, so I've done that. That was part of my um, seams video, wasn't it? If you are new to the hobby, you haven't seen that, go back and take a look. It went out just a couple of days ago. And that's how to deal with seams. So they've gone together, and then we've got this part going on the top, which is our valve or cam drive. Shafts. Very similar to what you see on a Harley Davidson. So that knife out of the way, so I don't stab myself again. It's always the problem with the brand new blade, they're they're so sharp. There's me saying that the most dangerous thing is a blunt blade, and then I cut myself. So we're using a, a flory skinny sponge here to clean up the seam lines on these shafts, because they're brilliant for removing seam lines on little round parts. And then there's a big sink mark in the middle. But again, as I say, it's a Merlin engine. It's all painted black. I'm not going to worry about it. And then this is going to go into that slot there. And it looks like it's symmetrical front and back. So that's just going to drop in there. That's quite tight. So I'm just going to, you can see this happens a lot with kits. You can see that rectangular hole is sort of that shape exaggerated and it happens a lot with kits is because they put draft in the mold tooling so that the parts pop out so just come along like that like that just cut out those little bits of wedge to make your slot into a nice rectangle and now that will drop straight in just like that And there we go. And then I'm just going to get the extra thin, which is a little trick. If you've got remnants of seam lines left, get your extra thin, just brush it over and that'll get rid of anything that's there. And then this is going to fit onto here. And those, those two rods, are going to go into those two nubbins in the bottom of the cylinder heads, just like so. There we are, that's that in place. And that is a really nice fit, that's going to need clamping, so I'm going to clamp it first. If you clamp first, you won't get glue oozing out. If you glue it and then clamp it, you'll have glue oozing out everywhere. So I'm going to get a clamp on here just pull that nice and tightly in move the clamp down a touch and there we go let's change the position of that clamp a bit because it's there we go, that's better. That's got it down nice and flat now. Flattish. In fact, I think this part needs two clamps because it's it's kind of rocking around on there. Rocking around the Christmas tree. as it were. Saying that because it's Christmas. Right. So 
that's on there we're gonna leave that to dry before we go any further and we're back so here's the engine with the gear casing fitted on the back and uh, I don't know if you can hear my voice but my bloody cold has come back yay uh, right so next step here we've done that bit well no sorry we've done the gearbox casing that's right now we've got to do the header tank and the front uh, reduction gear with the spinner spindle in there the prop spindle should I say now what they're asking us to do is fit this to the to there okay and then glue this assembly onto the engine that's aluminium everything else is black so I'm going to leave that off okay so we'll leave that off and then we're going to fit this onto here and that fits on there lovely and we've got the spinner going inside okay so we've got the nice accurate splines on the spinner and that's going to go in there like that and this it looks like yeah, it's perfectly designed so that the spinner is, is butting up against there. So that's cool. So it's, I, I keep calling it the spinner, the spindle. So that's all cool. So we get some glue around there, get some in there. There we go. So that's glued on there nice and solid. All looking good. As I say, that's just going to plop on there afterwards. I'm not going to fit it now it's a different color right so we've done that we've built this up already that's there we've built this up already that's there so we go over the page and it's telling us to fit the the charge cooler onto the inlet duct so that's just gonna go drop a glue in there drop a glue in there drop a glue in there and I've moved it with my finger well done night there we go That's going in there and then they're telling us to put this onto the back of the engine and obviously that there is going to go onto the inlet manifold so that's going like that and that doesn't quite want to go over that pin I don't think or it needs to be slightly shorter shorter should I say not shorter something is stopping that going in fully we've got a gap all around there and I think could be let's take this off again okay that's just how it goes let me try sanding some of this away let's see if that makes it any better there we go that fits a lot nicer now so we'll put this back on There we go, everything's buttoned up lovely now. So I'm going to put a drop of glue into there. Glue the charge cooler onto the inlet manifold and then we'll just run some glue around here. And glue the supercharger onto the gearbox gear case at the back. And there we are, nice and solid do with clamping really but uh, I'm not going to worry about it too much okay and then on the back of there oh don't worry yet we've got to build up this little assembly here and then we're going to add that onto the front of the uh, inlet ducting so we've got K59 and K73 so that's going into that we've got a recess on there and a block on there We'll put a drop of cement on here again we've got one of those ejector pin marks with the raised edge so make sure you get rid of that and then k64 another one of those keyhole type locations which is cool that fits on there beautifully so that's that little assembly done and then this in turn telling us down here going to fit that onto the back of the inlet trunking which is already done Again, we've got one of those lovely positive keyhole shapes that presses on there. I swear you could build this without glue. And then we're going to add K12, K78 and K6 onto here. So K12 is going to go on the bottom like that. I 
believe again this is symmetrical so it has no special way special way is a new serial for people who can't say k and then k6 is this little piece here and that's going that way up with its legs sticking out so that's going to sit on there give that a little push down and then that's not it this piece here this is K78 that's going to slot onto there on that big flat so we'll put some glue on there and then drop that down on there like so There we go, that's that built up. And then this in turn is going to go onto the back of the engine there. So we just run some cement in. <coughs> There we go. If you see there's a gap on here, what's happened, you can see the marks on it. As it's pushed out the tool, the face of it has kind of become bulbous. So what I'll do with that is just probably run a bit of it, run a bit of uh, Mr. Servicer in there. Just to get rid of that little gap around there, as you can see. But it's hardly visible on the model because it's, it's sort of tucked away in the, in the bottom of the wing. Um, so that's that done. So now we've got to add these parts here. So we've got K15 and K44. They're going on to the bottom of the engine so K K15 is going to go into those two holes there and it's fed beautifully by those pipes it's very tight fit and those pipes line up beautifully so I'm going to use some extra thin quick setting on here just put a drop in there and then push that pipe in just hold it there for a second then it should stay there we go and then a drop in the side here just to hold it in place that's that you can see how those pipes feed into that unit there and then that pipe comes off the bottom and goes into there it's bloody lovely really really nice this is uh, i think this is one of the best marillions i've ever seen um and then we've got this part going on the side here k44 and it's made foolproof it's got three pins on it so that it can't i believe this is a packard engine isn't it Sorry guys, I had to have a cough there. Yes, it is a Packard engine, isn't it? It's got the, um, that's how you can tell by that pipe. I remember from the uh, Border Models Lancaster, the the Packard cylinder banks have this pipe as the rolls Royce have like a casting. So that's that done. So we've done step 161 now. Let's go over the page. Now we've got this, this unit to go on here, it's like a filter of some sort, and then we've got that pump there, or whatever it is. So that is going to sit on top of that peg in there. So that's gone down there beautifully. Just put a drop of cement in there to hold it in. So 
just like that. And then we've got this unit here going into that hole there. It's a tight fit, but it does go in. That's gone in there. It doesn't want to stay down. Make sure it's central. There we are. And it's vertical. Yeah, that's gone in there and then this one can go in here on this side this is another k44 another um pipe the coolant if you can hear any grumbling or moaning in the background it's not me or my bottom it's my dog jess Go, that's that gone in there so we've done that now we've done that so now we're going to start to oh I just noticed something here they've made a mistake they're telling you here to paint the magneto black and the actual conduit silver it's the other way around the magneto should be silver and the conduit should be like a black but then it's got the braiding coming out which is like a bronzy sort of color so we've got these here so this one is 79 so the first one to go on is 80 and they're telling us that these, these spark plug cables are going to go into their relevant holes on the engine. So they all line up beautifully. It's really, really nice. And then this is going to go onto a pin on the side of the gearbox there. Like so. In fact, that doesn't even need to be glued, that magneto. It's so tight on that pin. So a drop of cement on each of those spark plugs. Just to hold them in. The magneto I'm not even going to glue. It's pointless. And then do the same on this side with this one. Get the spark plugs to go in. This one doesn't fit as well as the other side. But this is the one with the issue with the tooling. So it may be that the holes have been pulled while the plastic was still in its soft state. in like so they just want to pop out again looks like that one doesn't want to go in its hole yeah it does Right, so drop a glue on those. There we are, they've all gone in lovely. There we are, there's the, the detail on the side of the engine and the other side there. Then we've got the secondary ignition loom going in the top of the engine. Now this These are going to go in through these holes. So I would like to be able to assemble this first because what they've done, they've got this sort of single conduit along the top with the cables coming out. And this is very nicely made by Airfix. I'd like to be able to build that up and then put it on, but I don't think I'm going to get it in there. If I do, I'm just give it a go. 
although it fits so beautifully together, I don't think we need to worry about it. So I think we'll put this put this one on first, as they're telling us in the instructions. So this is going to go in here. And this pipe back here is going to connect onto that magneto. Oops. Oh dear, this is going to be a difficult fit. We hear some, hear some kids screaming now we're playing because they're on their way home from school. And it's going to snow in a couple of days, so they'll be really happy about that. Right. So I've glued that. I'm going to leave get to dry, I think. So that becomes a nice strong joint. That's oh, okay. It's okay. It's fine. And I think what I'll do is just glue the front one. Get a nice drop of glue in there. And then just push that into position. There we are. And then this is going to drop down the other side. Just like so. And what I'm going to do is put some cement in here. And then finagle with it to get it to fit. That fits absolutely beautifully. Look at that. That is lovely. When you think it's got all the little cutouts in it to go around those cables. Look at that. That is Gorgeous how that's gone together. I'm just going to put a drop of glue down in here. We'll put a drop of glue in the back one, perhaps in the back one there as well. And there we go. Put a drop more cement on that one. I think I might need to put a little clamp on it. And then the final part is to fit this hydraulic pump, whatever it is, I'm sure it's a pump, down the side. So this could be a tricky fit because, as I say, the mould was distorted and, the, and it's bent on the end. So let's just see how that goes in. It needs to be pushed in. There we go. And again, that is a lovely fit in there, really snug. Let's get a drop of cement on there. Give that a little twist because it's not lining up properly. There we go. So beware of that on your kit. That's part number K. Do, 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 do. It's K9. Um, <laughs> funny enough, it's a bit of a dog that part. There we go. And then this top one, I'm just going to give that a little squeeze now that the glue is gelled slightly. That should stay in place. This plastic is just a joy to work with, guys. No, I'm not an Airfix fanboy, and Airfix have not given me any discount. I've paid full price for this. Paid for with my own money, and if it was bad, I would say it was bad, and it's not. It's absolutely bloody awesome. And there is one beautifully built up Merlin engine. Now, the next thing to do is get into all this bulkhead stuff. I've built up these units here. As I say, build up assemblies where you can. 
but I'm not going to bother with any of this until we've got the, the, the bulkhead in and the fuselage attached to the wing. I'm not doing the bulkhead until I know the fuselage is cured hard and I haven't got a seam coming back here. So um, that's what we're doing there. So, but I have done the engine bearers. Where were they? I don't need them out, do I? Where is the engine bearer? Here it is. So the engine is going to sit in there like so. And there you can see we have a really, really lovely Merlin engine. And I'm going to say this now. That is every bit as nice as the Border Models Wing Nut Wings engine. It is gorgeous. And we've got a lot of pipe work to add yet. You can see here we have we have the main cooling pipes going along here, which they go into those holes. If you remember, I was talking about holes in the wing spar, and they're going to go into them. So that's what I was wondering. Um, so we've got the main coolant pipes there, and then we've got all sorts of pipes going in here. We've got two down here. Um, we've got we've got those two main main ones going. Then we've got this one going in here, and then we've got that reservoir there going on the top. And then we've got pipe work coming down the side. We've got more pipe work coming down here. You can see it's absolutely gorgeous. It's going to look stunning when it's in the aircraft. It's going to look absolutely. In fact, let's have a quick look. Let's just see how stunning it looks in the aircraft. Let's just get this engine bearer on here. I know it's a snug fit, so it'll stay in there. Push that into there, push that into there, push that into there, and push that into there. And then we can fit the bulkhead onto our fuselage, just like so. And then we can fit the engine onto our bulkhead, onto our bearer, just like so. If I can hold that in place, we can now see how she's going to look. There you go. That's how she's going to look with the engine on. Absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. And when we put it on the wing, that's going to sit in there like that. If I can get the engine to come forward, there we go. So that's how it's going to sit on there and then the fuselage will just pop along in behind it so you can see we're starting to get what looks like get this out of the way what looks like a complete spitfire on the bench zoom you out there you go ain't she lovely Really, really nice. He's purdy. So there we go, guys. That's been a quick video on uh, building the engine. So we'll get some Mr. Servicer around those little gaps, like round here and probably on that cam cover there. And then we'll just get it all painted black and then do some detail painting and some weathering. I'll, I'll probably show you all that when we get there. So um, I was actually thinking halfway through this, what I'll do is just... Make this so that I can fit the engine over the front. I may even see if I can do that yet. I may see if I can make this so that we can fit the engine, the covers, over the front. Because if they're not a very good fit and they keep falling off, that's going to be a bit of a problem. Because this is an out-of-the-box build, I can't go any magnets and stuff. So, we shall see. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you all soon for part whatever's coming next. Five, in it, But I'm going to slot this one in between so you get to see the engine. Isn't it lovely? I'll put some music and pictures up and a bit of music and uh, we'll call it a day. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Oh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Any questions, pop them in the comments down below and um, I'll see you all soon. Bye.